Welcome back to the channel. Thanks to my sponsor PCB Way. In this video, I'm going to attempt to SMD solder for the first time. For this, we are creating a PCB with a rotary encoder and a LED ring light. In part one, we will focus on the design and assembly of the volume knob. In part two, we will design a case and do the coding. It took me quite some time to get everything in the right place and get it in the right orientation. And I thought it would look great if I would do a special print on it. I was right, it does look great. To do the SMD soldering, we are going to use the Miniware MHP50 mini hot plate. It is a really nice device and a really big step up from the MHP30 because it has a bigger plate. There will be a link to the hot plate in the description below. This hot plate has been provided to me by PCBWay. And since we're talking about PCBWay, here's a word from our sponsor. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. PCBWay is best known for manufacturing PCBs, but they also do CNC machining, 3D printing and much more. You can easily get a quote by uploading your model and setting your specifications. The times I use the 3D printing service is when I can't print the part on my FDM printer. Also handy is their PCB prototype assembly. Go check them out on pcbway.com. This is the first time I ever applied solder paste to a PCB. So I got out some old PCBs and tried to build a frame. And I made the mistake to order a framework stencil and for a size PCB like this you do not want to have a framework stencil you'll see that later on why I studied some other videos how to apply solder paste to my PCB step one is always make a frame with other PCBs and secure them with painters tape I'm hoping that you don't notice, but my surface was not flat. Making sure that I can remove the PCB when the solder paste is applied and put in a new PCB. And as you can see here, one wise lesson I learned in the past, if it moves, and it shouldn't move, apply more tape. If it doesn't move and it should move, apply WD-40. And then we're finally set to put on the framework. As you can see, don't order a framework stencil because it's way too big for this PCB. And 
and here I'm applying the solder paste for the first time but don't be fooled it took me some while to align this uh, framework correctly to the small PCB Time for the second PCB. And here we go again. Now it's time to pick and place the parts. This chore was a lot, but after I started it was fulfilling and really peaceful. And that was something I did not expect. Also you can see the solder paste and especially since it was my first time it didn't look that bad. And after a while you get a system and you get into the flow and it goes quicker. And when the final parts are laid down, then it's time to heat it up and do some SMD soldering. I can really recommend the Miniware hot plate. It does a job really good, but I'm going to shut up right now because the next images are really satisfying.
after the cleanup is done I'm soldering the ESP32 C3 from Seed I chose this board because of its size it's really small and effective in the near future I'm testing out some different soldering stations uh, stay tuned for that when you're soldering this board don't be too generous with your solder you can bridge it underneath and while I love hand soldering uh, I was scared to do SMD soldering at first but after this first experience I'm not scared about that anymore I think it's really satisfying and it gives a real nice result And yes, the first question you have is, why do I use a true hole resistor? Uh, I thought it would look good. We're almost at the end of part one. I'll give you a quick preview on how it's gonna look in part two. Thanks again to my Patreons. Please like and subscribe or you can support me on Patreon. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in part 2.